Keanu Reeves, the actor, is quoted as saying, For me, it's the visceral quality of it, the vibration, the wind, the sound. It's just really a great place to think, to feel, and to get away. Then he paused. And then he said, You know, when I don't ride a motorcycle, I go through withdrawal. It's not good for my health. Wow, that's a serious statement, isn't it? I'd recommend that you go out on YouTube and watch the video of Keanu saying those words, because he really means it. That's a heavy statement. There are a lot of reasons to stay as healthy as we can. When our health is in peril, we can't ride our motorcycles, not to mention the impact on our livelihoods and our loved ones. Simple to say, if we lose our health, life can take a very unpleasant turn. Granted, it's not always our choice when accidents or disease catch us by surprise. The relatively minor injury that I had here at home some months ago kept me off the bike for four months, and that's nothing compared to the impact others have experienced. I suppose then that today's episode is focused on preventable health issues and how we've got to put a large focus on keeping both our mind and our body in shape as best we can. Simply put, we want to keep writing because writing makes us happy. It just does. Let's talk about that. Thank you for joining me today. Recorded in beautiful Loveland, Colorado. Welcome to Peace Love Moto, the podcast for motorcyclists seeking that peaceful, easy feeling as we cruise through this life together. Are you ready? Let's go. I was on a solo motorcycle trip across British Columbia, in line to load my bike onto a ferry from Vancouver to Victoria Island. They had all of us on motorcycles to line up in front of the cars. That alone felt pretty good. (laughs) It felt like we were this elite group of travelers. Wow, we are so special. Then on their signal, we started up the bikes and drove them onto this large boat. It was uh, BC Ferries, if I'm not mistaken. Well, anyway, they loaded us up on the front of the boat where we had a special section to pull into just for motorcycles. And it was then that the fellow next to me, who I didn't know, pulled off his jacket to reveal a t-shirt that not only caught me by surprise, but really made me laugh out loud. We struck up a conversation right away. His black t-shirt had a simple slogan on it that said, Go fast, don't die. (laughs) I still laugh about it to this day. And now that's just genius. I I get it. I'm sure that that statement could be interpreted in many ways. But for me, it means do what you can while you can. I guess, you know, they always say live life to the fullest. And I say do what makes you happy whenever you can. You know, throughout this podcast, even if you've listened to just one or two episodes you're pretty much hearing the same thing over and over again, whether it's just me talking or, or comments within interviews. For some of us, motorcycling just really makes us happy. Thus far, we've managed to discuss that topic in various ways 36 times so far, and this is number 37, but it's true. At least it's true for me. Now, while I'm saying this today, I'm watching our first snowfall of the season out the window. Yep, it's really pretty, and I'm certainly not going to be riding today or tomorrow for that matter. I was able to get in a short ride yesterday evening before the temperatures really started to drop, but as for today and probably the next few days, I'll be inside reading magazines, watching Rob Hamilton's moto camping videos like everybody else and planning for future episodes. Now, I understand that motorcycling is not for everyone. This is evident when you look through Cycle Trader and you find five year old motorcycles with 500 miles on them. <laughs> Those of us who ride a lot know that that's nothing. <laughs> that's because some people see people riding motorcycles and they think to themselves, oh, that really looks like fun. 
and then they spend ten or twenty thousand dollars on a brand new motorcycle to only find out uh, this isn't really for me. But for some of us, I don't know how to describe it. Just ask my neighbors. They see me time and time again backing my motorcycle out of the garage and heading off for a ride in all sorts of crazy weather. I think it was in the high 30s yesterday when I headed out for my short ride late in the afternoon. I was on my BMW GS Adventure, which I acquired fairly recently, and I had just attached the controls for my heated jacket liner, which runs off of the motorcycle battery. It's one thing to ride on a nice day, but it's another thing to go out on a cold day or when it's rainy or really windy or whatever. But that's just me. Besides, I cranked up the temperature on that heated liner and with my heated grips, all was well in the world. It's like, for many of us, something just clicks, something connects when we're riding our motorcycle. It's an acceptance, of course, of the dangers, minimizing those as best we can by always wearing our helmet in full protective gear, but also it's accepting the fact that sometimes the wind is going to blow really hard, and sometimes it's going to be really cold, like my ride yesterday, or some days it's going to be really hot, and some days there are going to be people in the cars that follow too close, and sometimes your back will hurt, your hands will hurt, your, your butt will hurt from riding all day. But for many of us, too, it's a cost and reward thing. We accept that this is the price to pay sometimes for an amazing joy that gets us back out there day after day and year after year. To keep riding, we've got to keep healthy, both physically and mentally. So let's talk about the physical side first. Riding a motorcycle is physical. I know that for sure. I'm sure you do too. But those who don't ride hardly understand that because they see us just sitting there, occasionally putting one foot on the ground when we come to a stop sign. But what most people are not aware of, and honestly, those who are experienced and ride for a long time even forget about, is balance. We're in a constant state of keeping our bike balanced, whether that's maintaining a straight line at high speeds or slow speeds, and constantly correcting for the wind or changes in the road surface, or balancing into curves or remaining safe and steady when we accelerate or or apply the brakes, as we who ride know, braking, for example, is an art all to itself. Knowing that there is a balance between using the front brake and the rear brake for the most effective and safest slowing and stopping without losing traction. We all know that. That's an art in my mind. You certainly learn it out here on these twisty roads in Colorado. Physical endurance is certainly a necessity too, right? The more you ride, the better you get. And the better you get, the more often you get invited to go for rides with other skilled riders. And skilled riders seldom go on short rides. I'll just put it that way. Usually it's an all day thing. Maybe hundreds of miles and many hours in the saddle. Doing that balancing thing that we were just talking about all day long. And it's not about being able to hold on to your handlebars all day long. It's about teaching your body how to apply just enough pressure, staying light on the grips actually, and staying fully in control, all the while being ready for an emergency maneuver in the blink of an eye. That's the trick. you got to do it without even thinking about it when an emergency comes up. Always using your eyes to scan for any possible threat, like another car or maybe uh, another rider who's not particularly aware, maybe following you a little bit too close, or you're following them too close, something in the road like an animal. It's a state of being relaxed, yet constantly ready for anything. Riding a motorcycle requires mental fitness too. You ever heard of mindfulness? Sometimes folks hear that word mindfulness or meditation and they think, oh, that's some kind of hippie thing. (laughs) Well, if you've noticed the latest update that I made to the podcast logo, this tie-dye background, well, you're at the right place for a hippie thing. (laughs) I would argue too, though, that it's not just a hippie thing. It's important and it's really needed today, probably more than ever. 
I work at a large international company, Corporate America, as some call it. I get to work with people from all around the world, and I meet new people just about every day. I, I love it, really. One of the things I especially appreciate about our company is their focus on mental health. One of the executive sponsored programs is called Mindfulness. And literally, we take time out of the working day, just a little while, to take care of our mental health that's made available to us. I so appreciate that. Now, as I've learned over the past couple of years, especially, mindfulness, which is, by the way, often spelled with a capital M, is about living in the present moment. It's about becoming completely aware of what's happening to you within you right now. They use the expression, breathe and know that you're breathing. And that's actually part of the content of a previous episode from this podcast that I called Think Like Your Dog. Essentially, mindfulness means being intentionally more aware and awake at each moment and being fully engaged in what's happening within yourself and all around you. So once a week... I attend one of the live group mindfulness sessions that's made available to us, and together, oftentimes with people I've never met, we experience what they call a practice of being in the moment and aware of our breath, our thoughts, and our surroundings. And as I've experienced personally, these practices have helped me to reduce stress and improve my focus. I usually get back to work with fresh new ideas. Business challenges that I was completely stuck on minutes before suddenly can get resolved. And that's really cool, to throw in a hippie term. (laughs) In a mindfulness discussion recently, I shared with the group that for me, mindfulness is not always about being still, but rather, sometimes... I'd say even oftentimes, I'm in a state of mindfulness when I'm flying down the road on my motorcycle. In those moments, I'm fully engaged with the bike and with the road conditions and with the weather and with the wind and what's ahead and what's behind me. I'm fully aware, fully present. I quoted from Keanu Reeves before, but I also ran across another quote, which I think is also very applicable. This quote was from William London, L-O-N-D-E-N, from the 1600s. He said, to ensure good health, eat lightly, breathe deeply, live modestly, cultivate cheerfulness, and maintain an interest in life. Wow. From the 1600s to now, it's still quite applicable. I certainly agree with Mr. London. He said all those things years ago. But if I may, I'd like to add one more thing to ensure good health. Find what you like to do and just do it. I ride my motorcycle for one simple reason, and I say this all the time. It makes me happy. So to wrap up today's episode... I'll let you know that my own Go Fast, Don't Die t-shirt arrived in the mail just this morning. On the front of it, it has that slogan. And on the back of it, it says, good things come to those who ride. I've got it on right now. I wanted to have it on as an inspiration while I recorded this. And I'm looking forward to striking up a conversation with someone when they read it and say, hey, that's pretty cool. (laughs) Maybe I'll head over to the local coffee shop now and just see what happens. But I want to tell you too, good things have come to me since I was a little kid because I had the opportunity to find what I'm passionate for, which is riding motorcycles. And it keeps coming to me even through this podcast. It's you, the listeners, those who I know and those who I don't know, who I so appreciate. You are that good thing that's happened to me. And I thank you so much for that. Until we visit again. I wish you peace. I wish you love.